Going for round two on a subwoofer install on my 2019 1SS Camaro. Um, I did a video before showing how you can depin this connector here for uh, disabling the active noise control. I went ahead and I purchased, this is actually the Bose bypass from Subthumb, but if you take a look at it, and I'm hoping the connectors match up, I haven't tried this yet. Um, you see pins one and two are the only ones that are fed through. So this will effectively give you the same uh, feed through as disconnecting the uh, microphone connectors on that guy. So I'm gonna take this out of the bag and we're gonna see if this connector mates. There we go. No problem at all. Made it nice and clean, nice and easy. Um, they're about 26 bucks, but you don't want to mess around with taking the pins out and trying to wrap them with uh, with electrical tape and all that fun stuff. I ended up wrapping mine with electrical tape, and uh, depending on the tape you use, you may end up with uh, a lot of residue. And then when you try to wipe it off, put them back in, that's not so fun. So I ended up pouring another one of the um, uh, tee off cables from them because I didn't want to cut into anything. If I'm going as far as <coughs> not deep pinning it, I might as well get a nice tee off cable. The first one I had was real stiff on, on the mating connector to the amp. So I'm going to see how this one fits right now and uh, maybe it'll be a win win because this guy went in super easy, real nice, um, just like a factory connector. So we'll see. Maybe I just had a tight one or maybe that's just the thing on this particular connector. So just like the previous harness that I had, this big one's still a lot of effort to get in. I'm not going to fully seat it because um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solder my um, my line level adapter into here. So I'm just going to leave this guy out. This guy rest in here so he doesn't bang up against anything. And then we're going to go ahead and solder up our harnesses. But this is really cool. That that adapter, it's this part number right here. Um, I haven't seen it on Sub Thumps website separately, so I ordered it from Amazon. It's about 26 bucks. This guy on Amazon is about 80, um, but that's shipped, and I do not know what um, what the shipping is for Sub Thumps. I think it's 60 on their site, but I don't know what their shipping is, and I wanted it the next day. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fit up uh, my amp plate and start working the power wiring. Got a lot of the uh, final wiring in here now. Um, got all the adapter harnesses soldered up to the line level converter. Add some, added some power extensions to it. I took those uh, big adapter connectors from the uh, sub thump, um, let's see, the speaker out adapter and then the noise cancellation adapter. And I wrapped them up, I wrapped them individually in felt, and then I wrapped the whole bundle in felt just so they don't tear each other up or damage any of the factory wires. Um, keeps it all nice and nice and clean. So uh, going on a little bit of faith here. I haven't actually tested that uh, um, active noise cancellation bypass, but it's the exact same wiring I've already done, so I'm pretty confident in it. Um, let's see. We've got, to, we've got our ground for our line level converter, ground for our amp, power for amp, and power for line level converter. I put a fuse tap, or not fuse tap, but a fuse um, block on that as well, just so it's individually routed with a much smaller, I think I'm gonna put a 15 amp fuse in there. Um, so now, I don't have any fuses in right now, but it's gonna clean this up and uh, route the power into the amp. And uh, I'm actually pretty much done, so we'll uh, get this all buttoned up and uh, give her a go and see what happens. All the uh, power and ground wires tightened down now. So again, I use this uh, ground point here for my um, line level converter, and then I use this ground point over here, which the battery's tied to, as my uh, main ground for the amp. And then I've got my green wire, which is power for the amp, and the smaller wire, which is power for the converter. Everything's tightened down. Um, did some extra wrapping in places just in case of chafing. Wrapped the fuse and felt. Got a little crazy with the felt everywhere, but I definitely didn't want it uh, chafing on this main. That's a zero gauge, maybe, or one gauge power wire. That'd be bad because that would be not an easy thing to replace. So, okay. Got all that buttoned up. Got all my conduit, protective sleeving stuff on 
different wires power run into the converter if I put another layer of felt all around all these um, adapters just so nothing gets damaged and um, got my ground and remote wired into the amps and I just have to wire the power in and uh, we're good to go plates tightened down have another video where I made this plate this this thing works out pretty good so if they've been able to fit um, an Alpine MRV M500 on it and uh, this Rockford um, R500 1XD. This one I had to put the bolts down and then put the amp down. Um, I guess I could have got an open end wrench in here, but it's a real pain. So I went ahead and did it that way. So only a couple little things to button up, put the cover back on the positive terminals, and uh, I'll be ready to give this a shot. And wire harnesses are all bundled up, tied them into the factory path everything routes through and have the cover on everything's installed in the amp other than the speaker so we're gonna go ahead put the trim back just to make sure that everything uh, sits flush and uh, give it a test run and we have power and I don't have it turned up very loud because I dialed the gains back but we have output so I set uh, the line level converter to about half output and right now I have the gain on the amp at about three I'll probably leave it somewhere in that range, just to not overdrive anything. Um, but everything appears to be working right now. I'll we'll have to play with the uh, um, the crossover a little bit. The only other thing I the other thing I need to confirm too is the um, gonna make sure that that little uh, active noise cancellation bypass does its job. When I start the car, I don't get that uh, low frequency noise. But I've got to button things up to a certain point to really test that out, so I can have the sub in the trunk. This is, um, like before, it's pretty clean, but I really like the fact that that, uh, that Bose Active Noise Bypass uh, from Subthump worked on the non-Bose system. So that's nice. I don't have to tear anything apart. Sorry for the washed out video, but the sun's coming right in. We're going to go for broke here and start her up, see if we get that low frequency noise that we had without the uh, Active Noise Cancellation Bypass. So far, nothing. It's fantastic. Yep. So far, we're in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and drive it around just a little bit. Because um, it, it would do it coming to stops. and uh, Plus, I want to, it's a little early in the morning, so I don't want to mess with the adjusting the stereo in the house. But, yeah, that uh, bypass cable from Subthump. The, um, and I put the part number earlier in the video, the uh, one that's for the Bose amp fits the non-Bose amp. So real easy way to get rid of that annoying noise that pretty much makes it impossible. If you don't, if you don't get rid of that active noise cancellation, the uh, subwoofer is pretty horrible. So hope this helps out. You can see we're all buttoned up. I may eventually get a different box. I don't know if I mentioned that in the first time I tried to install an amp, but this one's actually meant to be a down firing. But it fits in here pretty good. Um, did some decent, not like crazy burnout acceleration, but did some reasonable acceleration, didn't slide, so happy with that. See, it's pretty clean. Really no traces except for the box itself, and then everything obviously is under the spare well. I put the, or spare tire well, I put this foam piece I had actually from a radiator that was shipped to me for a different car, just um, in case I load something in the back. This, this panel is going to want a bow because the factory foam piece um, supports it in the middle. So this will allow it to uh, have the foam between it and the amplifier and give it some sort of support. That's it. Uh, no issues to report. The uh, active noise cancellation bypass did the trick. So that was fantastic. Um, yeah, it was a kind of a deal breaker before and now it works great. No issues at all. Don't have that noise starting up, as I showed in the video, and then I also don't have any noises I had previously if I came to a stop or something changed the cabin noise. Um, I get that, that feedback, nothing, so it works perfect. Did my hands-free call, no issues. Person could hear me fine, so all the voice commands work and the chimes work, so it's worth $26 in my opinion. Uh, just to not have to, I mean, you can deep in it. I showed you in a different video how to deep in it. It's not that hard. 
But if you're going to go ahead and, and put the um, harness that Subthumb makes that breaks out the speaker lines, tees into them essentially, so you don't have to cut into your wires at all or put T-taps in, you might as well buy that one for the extra 20 bucks. You're in it for 100, but you're making zero irreversible modifications to your wire harness. So all of this can be taken out. I've already done it once. All of this can be taken out with no trace. I think it's a real nice way to do it. Anyway, hope uh, this helps some people out. At the very least, you know what to do to bypass the active noise cancellation.